I found the secret to making Lucario completely overpowered in singles. Today I'm going to show you two amazing battles where this Lucario moveset really shines. It's going to be a fun time, okay? Stick around till the end of the video for a rental code of the team. And you're probably wondering what the secret is. Well, the ingredients go like this. First, we add a dash of reversal and endure. Then a sprig of Terry Ghost to protect from E-Speed and Mach Punch and self on fighting types. Throw on a Salak Berry and voila, you have a ridiculously strong Lucario moveset. Today's first battle is against Ferbders, and let me tell you this one's a good one. Lucario puts in the absolute work throughout, but is it enough to win the game? So without further ado, I present to you the Lucario video. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun to my opponent, Ver Ferbders. <laughs> they're gonna lead off with Ampipomp as I lead off with Dragapult. I figured they'd lead with Ampipomp to fake out stuff, but they can't fake out Dragapult, of course. So I'm just gonna drop a Draco straight away and get that jet pack. They, 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 they avoid it. They swiftly avoid that and they go for a triple axle, which is definitely gonna take out Dragapult if they hit all three times. They do hit all three times. It feels like everyone hits three times against me, but then when I use it, I only hit like one or twice, which is really annoying. But anyway, Dragapult goes down to an unfortunate Draco Meteor miss. Um, so now I'm leaning towards, they can't fake out, so we could go Torterra here. The whole team's weak to Torterra, but they haven't Terraged yet. So it's a bit of a, you know, a, a bad moment. So let's go into our Corviknight. Corviknight walls the ever-loving crap out of Ambibomb. Uh, but like, the plan was to go for a Draco Meteor, get the Eject Pack, and then go into Corviknight. Like, get damage on the Ambibomb, because its fake out could be really annoying later on. So let's go for a U-turn real quick. They do go for a knockoff. Interestingly enough, I thought they'd switch out here. We go for the U-turn anyway. They knock off our Rocky Helmet. We go for the U-turn. Nice bit of chip damage on the Ampibomb, which is great. And we withdraw. We withdraw. So that's great. Um, I'm leaning towards the Lucario. I think Lucario kind of forces them to switch out here. Because they can't really say any go for a knockoff. Because we could be justified. Which I don't think we are. I think we're in a focus. But let's go for a Meteor Mash anyway. They go for a U-turn, which is going to do a no damage from an Ampibomb. And they basically, they, I think they go Petra Run here, but Petra Run can't really do much either. I think, if anything, they go Rev of Room. Quillfish comes in. Nice and shiny as well. I like shiny uh, doing Quillfish, but we're in a focus, so we don't get intimidated, which is nice. We get a free Meteor Mash off, which does a solid amount of damage. But now we have to switch out because we can't stay in against this thing. Uh, we definitely go into Corviknight because they're either going to go for a point. They're not going to go for a poison move because we're, we're steel type. They're either going to go for a spikes or a toxic spikes. Probably one of the two or a taunt or a destiny bond or something. So um, let's see what they do first and foremost. They go for a toxic spikes. That's fine. We can defog them away. We can definitely defog them away. And now we just go for a defog like so. They go for a taunt. Ah, we can't defog if they taunt us. That's one of the one of the cons of being negative speed nature and IVs um, on Corviknight is that you get outsped by things like other walls. So let's go for a U-turn anyway. They go for another layer of toxic spikes. I'm actually like I'm actually like looking at this set and I'm thinking they're a defensive set. So really, we could just stay in with Lucario. We could have just stayed in with Lucario and Meteor mashed. To be honest with you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into Lucario and I'm going to try and get some attack boost with Meteor mash. I think that is the way to go. We are Terra Ghost. I believe. Yeah, we are Terra Ghost. So we can we can do that on the, the Amber Bomb's fake out. So let's go for a Meteor Mash real quick. They withdraw the Quillfish. What are they going to go into? Are they going to go into the Reverb Room? Salazzle. Salazzle. So Salazzle is one of the ones that puts a damper on everything. We go for a Meteor Mash. It's going to do no damage. And we do get an attack boost, but it's not worth going for like, I don't know. It's, it's not, it's not, they are, they are leftovers as well, so they're probably a toxic stalling set. So I don't want to get my Lucario toxic. I don't want to get anything toxic, but I'm going to have to. Um, unless I go into Espeon right now, which I am going to do. Espeon should be fine. Uh, Espeon can definitely do some stuff here against their team, other than the Overquill. Uh, oh, sorry, not the Overquill, the Quillfish. So we're going to get poison from that, which is fine. The, if they go for, a, oh, they go for a substitute. Ah. That's not too bad, though. Because the, the thing that they don't realize is that sound moves hit behind substitutes. Which is something not a lot of people know. Um, but we have Psychic Noise on this particular Espeon and we outspeed the Salazzle. So let's just go ahead and go for a Psychic Noise. We may as well. They go for a Protect to try and stall out the... Um, 
try and stall out the toxic, which is fine. So there are a toxic stall, Salazzle. I personally like the nasty plot set for Salazzle. I want to use Salazzle next. I think that's what I'm going to use on the next team. So they actually do outspeed us. Or either that or a speed tie. They go for a flamethrower. That's going to take us right down. We go for a psychic noise though. And that's going to hit behind the substitute, unfortunately, for them. As Salazzle now goes down, we also get a nice and powerful throat spray, which is great. So throat spray is going to come through. There we go. And that's going to boost our special attack. And then from here, we just let the Ampibomb take us out because that's what the Ampibomb is going to do, right? Quillfish comes in. Interesting. So this thing is probably more physically defensive than it is um, especially defensive. So I'm, I'm actually tempted to just go for an Alluring Voice or a Morning Sun. Let's go for an Alluring Voice because we're going to go down anyway. So we may as well just go down fighting. So we, take, we do a lot of damage to the Quillfish, which is great. And then they go for a Crunch to take us out. So that's unfortunate for Espeon. Espeon does go down here, but it's not the end of the world. It took out the Salazzle done a lot of damage to the quillfish as well we now 100% go into lucario because we want to go for that uh, meteor mash to try and get the boost in defense in, in, in offense so let's go for the meteor mash real quick we do miss which is unfortunate and then they can go for whatever they want here they go for a crunch not going to do much damage to us it's resisted for uh, by, by the fighting type let's go for another meteor mash i don't see any reason not to and hope we get an attack boost they withdraw the quillfish what are they going to go into the petrun or the rebel room petrunt Petron comes in. Looking amazing. We go for the Meteor Mash, and that's going to do a nice little bit of damage. No attack boost. We're going to save Lucario, though, because it can still be really useful. If we can weaken this thing, we're going to be really useful. So let's go into Corviknight first and foremost. Good old Corviknight can come in. I wish I would have saved Espeon for this Petron, actually. You know, thinking back. It's not the end of the world, though. It's not the end of the world, that's for sure. So they go for a nasty plot. Ah, that's not good. However, they usually carry Hex, so it's a weaker weaker move, at least. Uh, let's go for a Brave Bird, first and foremost. They go for a Shadow Ball. That's going to probably nearly take us out. It does nearly take us out. We go for a Brave Bird. Bit of chip. Not, nothing too fancy. And now, what, what do we have to take care of this? Probably Torterra, right? If I had to guess Torterra. Or even, no, not Clefable. I think we have to go for a Brave Bird here to get as much damage on this thing as possible. They go for a Shadow Ball, that's fine. The only problem we've got now is... They probably have Malignant Chain. Which definitely KOs Torterra. But we also have this Terra Steel on the Clefable. But we can't do anything in return. So we're going to have to bank on Torterra taking this thing out of an Earthquake. So let's go into Torterra like so. We get Poisoned. Which means we probably get confused, right? We don't get confused because it wasn't the Petron that, that did it. So that's that's great. Let's go for an EQ because we might outspeed if they're, if they're a bulky variant. We do outspeed. Earthquake comes through. Doesn't quite get the KO as they go for a recover, which is very unfortunate. I could have shell smashed there. I could have shell smashed there so hard. As they get the poison, which is great. So that's, that's unfortunate that they get the poison. So let's go for another Earthquake here. And if we can weaken this thing, they go for a terror. Okay. What type are they going to terror into, though? Fairy. They go terror fairy. Ah. Not too bad because it means Meteor Mash will actually do some stuff. So we go for an EQ here. And then they go for a recover. So they're going to go for recover spam. They go for recover spam. They probably want to be back at full HP, and they're probably just going to Toxic Stall us. So they probably don't attack us here. So I think I think I risk it for a Biscuit and go for a Shell Smash. I think that's what we have to do. And if they Shadow Ball this turn, it's fine, because their health's still lowered enough to the point where Lucario could come in and go for a Meteor Mash. Could. Very well could. So we rose sharply. They go for another Recover, so they got a bit greedy there. And now, I think our best move to go for is probably going to be Bullet Seed. To be honest with you, I think it's going to be Bullet Seed. Because if we hit all five times with Bullet Seed, it's going to do more damage than the Earthquake would have. And if we can get this thing down to half health at least, we are going to be golden. So there we go. Bullet Seed comes through. Hits four times. Shadow Ball comes through. And now we bring Lucario in and it should finish this thing off with a Meteor Mash. Should. 
If we can hit it, if we can hit the Meteor Mash, we'll be golden. Come on, Lucario, you can do this for us. You can do this for us, surely. Anubis comes in. We go for a 100% of the time, we go for a Meteor Mash here. Meteor Mash does connect, and it does KO the Petron, which is great. Does it give us an attack boost? I don't think it did. That's unfortunate. But Petrunt going down there is amazing for us. Absolutely amazing. And Bomber the Great comes in. We are in a focus, so their fake out cannot take us out. Um, I say we go for an Endure, though. So I'm going to go for the Endure just in case. Because they've obviously brought it in for a reason. And it's to go for a fake out. So fake out comes through. It's obviously not going to make us flinch. We now go for... We 100% we go for a Meteor Mash here. I don't think they have a fighting time move. They've got a knockoff. Which is going to take us right down. But you know what? They've knocked off our Salak Berry, but we still outspeed their entire team now. So Meteor Mash comes through, takes them out. Gives us an attack boost. Yes! That's what we wanted. That's what we wanted. That's what we needed. In comes the Gudra. So Gudra's a good one here. Gudra is a very good one here. We don't need to Terror anymore. We can use it. We can save the Terror Steel for Clefable. Against the Reverb Room. So I think we Endure here. So we go for the Endure. Hopefully they don't go for Dragon Tail. They go for Flamethrower. Hopefully they don't burn us. Touch Ward. Don't burn. Endured the hit. No burn. Great. Now we can go for a max power reversal. At plus one attack. Let's go for the reversal real quick. Reversal comes through. Plus one attack. Cleanly takes out the Gudra. In one shot. That's amazing. Absolutely amazing. Lucario come through. Reverb Room is going to come in though. I'm pretty sure Reverb Room outspeeds us. They've already terrored. So we go from reversal once again. And I, ho I think we outspeed. We do outspeed. Takes the Reverb Room out, which is amazing. And now all they have left is Quillfish. We got a really good Lucario game right here, which is absolutely fantastic. So Quillfish comes in. That thing's not going to be able to intimidate us because of in Inner Focus. There we go. Inner Focus comes through. And then we just go for a reversal once again. And to take out the Quillfish, which is absolutely fantastic. We didn't need a Salak Berry because the Ampermon kind of KO'd itself in a way. But G, G, right there. That was a brilliant game, Ferbs. <laughs> okay, that was a wicked game, not going to lie. Lucario one-shotting that Gudra from full with reversal was absolutely clutch. Anyway, the next battle is against Juliana, and once again, Lucario pops off. Bit more of a struggle this time, so there's a good chance we'll lose, but don't count me out just yet. So without further ado, let the second battle begin. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun to my opponent, Juliana. So they're going to lead off with Galvantula, the tree victor. Nice and shiny as we lead off with Dragapult. So not a bad matchup. We outspeed. We can go for a flamethrower if we want to, but they probably go for a sticky webs. I doubt they go for a stab move, so let's go for a U-turn and break that sash. They do withdraw the Galvantula, we'll not wanting to take all, you know, unnecessary damage. And they're going to go into Ninetales. I could have Flamethrower there, just to let you know. And they're going to Ninetales, nice and shiny. We go for a U-turn, though. They're going to get that snow up. And then U-turn comes through, and we get a free switch into the Ninetales with whatever we want. Now, I'm leaning towards Lucario. Leaning towards Lucario, because it does pretty well against their team. If they go Aurora Veil, we can defog it away later. So let's go into nine to, into Lucario. Lucario comes in. Like so. We go for a Meteor Mash 100% of the time here. They probably go for an Aurora Veil trying to take it like a champ. They do go for an Aurora Veil. Let's see how well they take this Meteor Mash. That's that's the real question. How long? How well are they going to take the Meteor Mash? So Meteor Mash comes through. Nearly gets the KO. Doesn't boost our attack though, which is unfortunate. Now I'm going to go for the Extreme Speed expecting the Tauros to come in. They do withdraw the Nine Tails. They may also go Glimora. I doubt it, though. Uh, they go Tauros, though. Tauros is fine. They're going to try and get the Intimidate off, but obviously... Oh, it's nice and shiny as well. Intimidate doesn't work because of the Inner Focus. We get a free Extreme Speed off. A nice neutral hit on the uh, Tauros, which is great. No damage, but it's still chip nonetheless. Now we switch out. I'm leaning towards the Clefable or the Dragapult. I think Dragapult doesn't care about being burned, so we're like, we may as well go Dragapult, right? So we'll withdraw... We'll go into Dragapult. Like so, Dra Lycanro comes in. There we go. They go for a Raging Bull. And that's going to do a nice bit of chip damage to us. But we can go for a Draco Meteor now, no problem. If they switch out, which they haven't, they go for a Draco Meteor. Nice bit of damage. Nice bit of damage. Which is great. 
And um, we switch out with the eject pack and we get a free switch in. They probably go for a Willow or a, a fighting type move. So I'm going to go into Corviknight and we're just trying to whittle this Tauros down at this point. So we'll go into Corviknight, get some Rocky Helmet chip on it with whatever attack they go for. Raging Bolt, fine. We take that like a champ. Not really. It does a lot of damage. Uh, I'm just wondering whether I need Corviknight or not anymore. Um... I say we go back into our dra uh, Dragapult because they're going to go for another Raging Ball. We outspeed, we go for a Shadow Ball. Right? That works. So we outspeed, we go for a Dragon Ball. They go for the Raging Ball. We definitely take that. They are locked in. They must be locked in or something. They must be banded or something. So let's go for a Shadow Ball. They withdraw the Taurus this time. What are they going to go into? The Ninetales? Or are they going to go Galvantula? Glimora? Glimora... Don't think it takes a Shadow Ball plus Draco Meteor combination. So we go for a Shadow Ball. Oh, it does take it pretty well as well. But they get the special defense drop. Ooh, that's tempting. I'm tempted to go for a Draco Meteor again, but I'm not. I'm going to go into Espeon because they might go for Hazards here. They might be thinking we could take a Draco Meteor. Let's go for Hazards. That's what they might be thinking. So we'll go into Dazzler the Espeon. Espeon does really well against the whole team. They go for the Stealth Frox and he gets bounced back. That's great. So we got the Stealth Frox up. Which is amazing. That breaks the Focus Sash on the Galvantula. And because they've got a Special Defense drop right now, I am going to go for a Psychic Noise. If they Terra Dark, which they haven't, then we're golden. There we go. We are golden. So we take them out. We get a Throat Spray Boost. We outspeed everything on the team. Except from no, the Ninetales gets outsped 100%. And we get that Special Attack Boost from the Throat Spray, which is amazing. Absolutely amazing. And they go with the Galvantula. So the Galvantula is an interesting one because it doesn't outspeed, I don't think. Or does it? Does it outspeed? I don't think it does. Let's go for another Psychic Noise. They might Terra here. They might Terra Dark. They don't. We outspeed. We go for a Psychic Noise. Takes out the Galvantula. I think at this point, we've got a little Espeon Sweepy Sweep. I think we've got a little Espeon Sweepy Sweep. Dragonite comes in. So Dragonite's an interesting one. They could be Weakness Policy, as is common on Dragonite. They probably are Weakness Policy because they've got Stealth Rock damage. We still go for an Alluring Voice, though, because it's super effective and we're at plus one. They're going to Terrastalize. Are they going to go Terra Normal or are they going to go, like, Terra Steel or something? Terra Steel will probably work in their favor as well, being resistant. They are Terra Normal, so that's good. That we at, least, at least we get, like, some sort of, you know, equipment going on. So Alluring Voice comes through. They go for an Extreme Speed Terra Normal. Are they banded, maybe? If that takes us out, it's no, it nearly takes us out. We go for an Alluring Voice, though. That's going to do no damage. It does a lot. Well, it does enough damage. Um, now I'm leaning towards the Dragapult. Yeah, I'm going to go Dragapult because they're going to go for an extreme speed again, right? They always go for an extreme speed there. So we go Dragapult. So good old Lycanroak can come in. If they go for a Dragon Dance here, that's ballsy. Extreme speed, that's fine. That's not going to affect us. Being a ghost type. We outspeed. We go for a Draco Meteor. No problem. No problems there. They withdraw Dragonite because Extreme Speed with Terra Normal could definitely be useful later if they can get rid of the Dragapult. And they're going to go into Tauros to sack it off, which is fine. Tauros comes in. If we miss, then we're kind of balls, but I don't think we miss here. And um, they get the Intimidate off, which is blocked by Clear Body. We go for a Draco. That's going to cleanly take out the Tauros. I kind of wish I should have gone for a Shadow Ball there, but I didn't want to risk it with a Dragonite because if he goes for a Dragon Dance expecting that, then we're kind of boned. Breloom comes in. This thing is an interesting choice. Um... I say we go for a U-turn. So I'm going to go for the U-turn real quick. U-turn comes through. I just think they're going to go for a Spore here. I think they're going to go for a Spore. So we may as well go into Espeon. Espeon can bounce it back and not get anything put to sleep. And if they do take us out, they take us out. It's, it's whatever. So they go for a Spore, which is going to get bounced back. But it won't work because obviously they are a uh, Grass type. So it doesn't affect them. Are they Mac Punch? That's the real question. Let's go for a Psychic Noise and find out. They are Mac Punch, which is fine. Absolutely fine. So what we can do here is we can finish this up with a Lucario Sweep with a Reversal. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to go into Lucario like so. And then we'll just go for a... We'll go for an Endure expecting a Mac Punch. So Endure comes through. Hopefully they don't Spore here. They do go for a Mac Punch, which takes us right down to our, uh, our Endure. Which is great and everything. We get the Salak Berry. And then all we need to do is go for an Extreme Speed here. That's all we need to do. Extreme Speed. Extreme Speed. Oh, no. Actually, no. We Terra Ghost. We Terra Ghost Reversal. 
We 100% Terra Ghost Reversal. Terra Ghost is really unique um, on this set because it stops extreme speed users like Dragonite. And it stops Mark Punch users like not necessarily Braloom. But like maybe something that has Mark Punch that you could potentially use in OU. That's still viable in OU like Conkelder or Infernape. So they go for a Mark Punch. It fails because of our Terra Ghost. We go for that Reversal tech. That's going to definitely take out the Braloom 100 billion percent. As down it goes. It takes out Gudra at full HP. So it definitely takes out Braloom. Dragonite comes in. Dragonite comes in. Stealth Rocks are going to chip away at it. We go for an extreme speed here 100% of the time. The battle was cancelled. We got a forfeit with Lucario. Yes. Absolutely amazing stuff. Lucario is the GOAT. Okay, that was amazing. Lucario put in so much work that game. You gotta love it. So you thought the video was over, right? Well, you were wrong, as we have a special bonus battle using the old Swampert team against Louise. And let me tell you, this battle was brilliant. So with that being said, let's jump straight into the game. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun, Louis. Is that how you pronounce your name, Louis? I'm not sure. Espafra is the lead, as we lead off with Swampert. It's good to see Espafra again, I will, I will be honest with you. Um, so let's go for a... I want to go for a flip turn straight away. I don't want to mess around with this thing. They go for a Calm Mind. They're going for that Sweepy Sweep straight away. And I'm not having it. I'm not having it. I'm going to paralyze it with my Slow King the next turn. I'm definitely going to paralyze this thing. So we go for a flip turn. Does a solid amount of damage. And that wasn't even a crit. Wow. And these things are usually physically bulky as well with their sets. So that's awesome. So now I'm leaning towards Cleavor. I think I will go Cleavor actually. Because I'm, I'm guessing they're this Calm Mind Stored Power set with uh, Speed Boost. Yeah, Speed Boost is there. That's, that's, that's the default. But um, we definitely go for a Stone Axe. No, we don't go for a Stone Axe because we'll miss. We go for a U-Turn here. Because they might Terra. They go for Protect to get that extra Speed Boost. Fair enough. That's going to give them four stat boosts. So that Stored Power is 100 base right now. But plus one Special Attack. So they are in a very, very good position right now. We go for another U-Turn though. I am confident they go for a baton pass. No way. What are they going to baton pass into? They were Calm Mind and two Speed Boosts. Probably like Urshifu or Glimora, right? Goldengo. Oh, dear. So Goldengo comes in, floats in the air on its air balloon. We go for a U-turn. And that's going to do no damage, obviously. But not all is lost. The air balloon has popped. I'm pretty confident in my Swampert's ability to take a plus one Shadow Ball right now. I'm pretty confident, but I also have in the back the Houndoom with the sh uh, with the Focus Sash, so I'm not too worried. Um, so we're going to Swampert now. And again, I'm pretty confident. Like I'm looking at the team, and the whole team's weak to ground, pretty much. So let's go for an Earthquake real quick. So they go for a Psychic, non-stab. Does a lot of damage. Shadow Ball definitely wouldn't have KO'd from there, but it does lower our special defense as we go for an EQ. And that is going to cleanly take out the Goldengo right there. So that is great for us. Goldengo well, going down is fantastic. They're going to go out into Urshifu now, which is going to be the water one. Water. I'm going to go into Corviknight expecting a Surging Strikes to get free Rocky Helmet chip damage off on it. So we're going to withdraw all Ogre now. Swamp it. And we're going to go into our nice and clean Corviknight right now, which should be able to take care of this Urshifu, no problem. They go for a Drain Punch, which is going to do no damage, probably. No, 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 I don't know why I said probably. I could have seen it on screen. Doesn't do much damage. Rocky Helmet does more. We can now go for a Brave Bird. That's just fine. They withdraw the Urshifu. What are they going to go into? Glimora? I'd say Glimora. Yeah, Glimora comes in. Glimora comes in because it takes a Brave Bird, no problem. And it sets up Toxic Spikes whilst taking said Brave Bird. So that's, that's fine. Uh, Brave Bird comes through, does no damage. We get more damage from the Recoil. And then they are leftovers, which is good to know. They are leftovers, which is good to know. And they aren't toxic debris, so they are corrosion. So they're going to try and poison us right now. So I'm going to go for a U-turn anyway. They do go for a toxic. I don't mind Corviknight being toxic. To be honest with you, it's not the end of the world. We can still handle it. And then we go for a U-turn here, which is going to be able to take out... Not take out, but it's going to, you know, get us into a better position where we can take on this Glamora better. So I'm leaning towards... I'm leaning towards the Swampert, but they might have Energy Ball. So I'm also leaning towards the Cleavor for the Stone Axe to get the Stealth Rocks up. I think that'll be useful. I think I will go Cleavor just to get the Stone Axe off. Just to get that uh, Stealth Rock on the field. I think that's going to be really useful. I'm pretty confident that we can 
two shot them with stone axe and i'm pretty confident that if they're bulky they won't be able to one shot us with power gems so i'm going to go for the stone axe like so they go for a spiky shield interesting so they're going to scout see what we're going to do with the spiky shield whilst also doing some damage to us as well so we go for the stone axe that's going to do no damage obviously but we do get some recoil um, from the spiky shield which is unfortunate breaking a potential sash that we might have had and um, they might be thinking we're sash they might be thinking that to be fair but Either way, Stone Axe is going to hurt something, so I'm going to go for it. So Stone Axe comes through. It should do a lot of damage. That does nothing. That did nothing. That is a defensive Glimora if I've ever seen one. And they go for a Toxic. So they probably go for a Spiky Shield this next turn, right? But they go for that Toxic. They can also Toxic my Sloking, which is why I'm not switching it in. Because I don't want the Sloking getting toxic. Not when that Espatha is right there, you know? So anyway, Cleavor is in its Toxic phase. Um, they don't have any reliable recovery other than leftovers, so we can probably play around this a little bit. I think they go for a spiky shield, so I'm going to go and swamp it. I'm pretty confident they won't have energy ball on this particular set, because they have, they've got to be toxic spiky shield, stealth rocks, and then maybe mortal spin or something. That's what I'm thinking. Spiky shield comes through, that's going to do nothing. So we get a free earthquake off, which is amazing, provided they don't randomly have energy ball, of course. So they go for the spiky shield to scout. See what we're going to go for. We obviously go for an Earthquake here 100% of the time. And they have zero switch-ins to the Earthquake, which is amazing. So Swamp Pit is once again putting in the work here. So they withdraw Glamora. What are they going to go into to take an Earthquake, though? That's the real question. Unless, unless they're Air Balloon on something. But they already had Air Balloon on Goldengo, so I doubt it. Urshifu comes in. It's going to get some Stealth Rock Chip, which is great. Breaking a potential Sash. We go for a Banded Earthquake. That's going to definitely KO them, right? Yeah, the Urshifu goes down. Down and out, I'm afraid. In comes the Glimora once again. They're probably going to try and Toxic us. Absolutely fine. They may also Terra Flying. If they Terra Flying, then that is terrifying. But they don't. They go for a Spiky Shield. Once again, just Scouting, I guess. Let's try and get some more Leftovers Recovery after them Stealth Rock Chip. But I don't think they take an Earthquake. I really don't think they take an Earthquake. I think I think this is another Swampert video right here. So now they're going to Terra. What type are they going to Terra into? Maybe Grass or Flying? Probably Flying, right? Ghost. Terra Ghost. I don't think they take an Earthquake still. I don't think they take an Earthquake at Terra Ghost. I really don't. So they go for that Mortal Spin to get the Poison, which is fine. I would have personally gone for a Toxic because it's going to rack up more damage over a long period of time. But you know what? To each their own. They're probably just trying to weaken us so that the Quackable can come in. But we go for that Earthquake. And that is going to definitely nearly KO the Glimora, which is fine. Um. So now what? We, we, this isn't a Swampert video anymore because the poison's going to whittle us down. They definitely go for a spiky shield here. So should we switch into Serena? I think we switch into Serena. So I'm going to go ahead and do it. I'm going to switch into Serena. We'll see if Serena can do some stuff here. We'll see if Serena can do some stuff here. So we're going to Majestic for Serena. They whip out the spiky shield, which is obviously going to do nothing. And then we just go for a knockoff. Knockoff should be able to KO this Glimora from there. Should. It's a big should. But it's a should nonetheless. So let's go for the knockoff. They probably go for a spiky shield, like I say. They do go for the spiky shield scout, which is fine. We can I think we can win this. I really think we can win this, despite the Espafra, despite the Urshifu. Well, the Urshifu's fainted, so we're not bothered about that. But yeah, we get hurt by that, which is fine. Knockoff's gonna um get rid of the leftovers as well, which will stop the recovery. So that gl this Glimora is becoming more of an issue than I wanted it to be. Let's go for a knockoff, though. They withdraw Glimora. And they're going to go into what? Espafra? Espafra cannot take a knockoff. We go for a knockoff. That's going to definitely take them out. So Espafra goes down, which is fantastic. Serena gets a KO, which is amazing. And now they've got... They've got... They've got um, Clodzire left. And they've got Quackable. And they've got um, Glimora. So Lucas comes in. The Quackable. This thing, I'm going to hit it in the face with a Power Whip. No, I'm going to hit it in the face with a Rapid Spin first. No, 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 no. Just a Power Whip's necessary. Just a Power Whip's necessary. We don't need the Speed Boost. If we can KO this thing with Power Whip, then we're golden. They go for a Triple Axle. Oh, that's actually a Game Changer. That's a Game Changer. That KOs Serena right there. I thought they would go for an Ice Spinner, which I was confident we would live. I completely forgot Quackable got Triple Axel. I will be honest there. Completely forgot. So they get a Moxie Boost, which is fine. 
And uh, we do have things that can take care of this. Like we have the slow king. We can stop a fugitive site. And um, we can also go into you in close combat. But they probably aqua step if we do that. I don't, I don't want them to get another moxie boost. Let's go into Corviknight. Let's go into Corviknight. Because Corviknight can take this thing out of a Brave Bird, no problem. We can definitely live a close combat at plus one as well. If they go for a close combat, we should be able to live that, right? We do live that. We get some Rocky Helmet Chip as well. They get a defense drop. And Rocky Helmet Chip. Which means this Brave Bird, even though it's going to take us out in the process, is definitely going to take out this uh, Quackable. So there we go. Quackable goes down. Leaving behind nothing but a trace of what was originally the duck. So they go into Clodzire, which is fine. We go into our Morgan, the Captain Morgan over here. The Cleaver. Cleavor. Um, do we go for an X-Scissor? Or do we go for a U-turn? I'm going to go for a U-turn here. I think they go for a Protect, but I'm going to go for a U-turn. We go for a U-turn. They don't protect. Does a nice bit of chip damage to the Clodzire. Clodzire is going to be the hard poke one to, to take out here. Because they probably go for an Earthquake, right? So what do we go into? Do we go into Swampert and then Earthquake after that? Or do we go Houndoom? Houndoom ain't doing much for us. So we can just go into Houndoom. We've got the Focus Sash anyway. They might stop Rocks, to be fair. They go for an EQ. That's going to definitely take us down to our Sash. There we go. Sash comes down to... And then we just smack this thing in the face with a Fire Blast, right? That's all we need to do. They are Black Sludge, so we know they have no intention to... Oh, they can't tear anyway. They've already teared the Glimora. We go for a Fire Blast here, just to get some damage off. There we go. Nice bit of damage. They go for an EQ. I suppose we could have Terra Flying there, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at the end of the day. Because now we get a free switch in with our um, Swampert, which is great. That's what we want. We want the free switching with Swampert. So all Ogre now comes in. Like so. We simply tap Earthquake and KO this Clodzire. They can't switch Glimora in. And if they've got Protect on the Clodzire, then so be it. Earthquake comes through. And that is going to take out the Clodzire nice and cleanly, which is great. So Clodzire does go down. And now we just have the defensive Glimora to take on, which is a real shame. So in comes the Glimora, the Terra Ghost Defensive Glimora. We can... They can go for a Spike Shield all they want. At the end of the day, even though our Earthquake's not connecting, we still live the poison this turn. So what they have to do here is they have to go for a double Spiky Shield in order to win. That's what they have to do. In order to win this 1v1 with Swampert, they have to go for a double Spiky Shield. Which... I don't think they can do. I don't think they'll pull it off. I'm hoping. I'm hoping and praying. So let's go for another EQ and hope they don't get the spiky shield twice. The battle was cancelled. They forfeited. We won. There we go. That was a long and arduous game, but it was a pretty fun one nonetheless. It was some interesting sets like Defensive Glimora and stuff. But yeah, GG. That was a fun one. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Feel free to use the first team using the rental code at the top right corner of the screen. Let me know if you do use it. I want to hear all about it. And with that being said, I'll see you all in a bit.